Hey, welcome back to After the Episode, brought to you by Line Cutters, the adjustable ring that cuts fish in line. All right, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the trip we just took yesterday on the episode. I had the folks from Huntsville, Alabama. We were dragging balloons behind us. That's a technique that Teresa kind of came up with. She was dragging a cork behind us in, in the South Florida Keys. And I thought, why not bring it up here to the Imacros? Why not bring it up here to North Florida and just kind of drag live pinfish behind me, which are easy to catch for me, while we're throwing our suspension baits, while we're throwing our jerk baits. And it gives uh, people who fish with me, they're double dipping, you know? You've got that live bait behind you and there's no telling what's gonna whack that thing while you're focused up front working soft plastics and Lord knows what. How do I do it? How, how am I doing these balloon rigs? Very simple. So what I start with is 40 pound mono because I know up here what I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with bull reds, I'm dealing with Jack Revelle and the flats, bluefish and stuff like that. I cut a length about three and a half, four, three and a half foot long, let's say. Let's pretend like this is my main line for this rod. I'll just go ahead and uh, surgeon's knot that in there. I put lay them together and take the doubled over like it's one piece and make a loop and run them both through the hole four times. I have a video on how to do surgeon's loop. You might want to check that out. This is not Ty's quick connect. This is the actual surgeon's loop. So four times and then I just wet it, cinch it down. I pull all four together and then I grab the main line and the tag in the uh, leader and I pull that. Got a three and a half foot, 40 pound leader. So then what I do is I come down about six inches or so from that leader knot and I grab about that much line, about five inches of line and I make a loop and then I repeat that. But I, I, I do a surgeon's loop, but I make a hole and I go through just a couple times. And that leaves me with a loop like that ah here's where i connect it to the rod and then here's the loop hanging i don't know four three four or five inches beneath the connection to the main line so now this is where i need to decide how much leader i need that's going to be determined by the flat the main flat that i was guiding on this this summer uh was averaging two to six foot deep so i was putting it about two and a half feet and then this is where the hook comes into play out of convenience, I was using a quarter ounce, whatever heavy jig heads I had laying around, and I would just fisherman's knot those in there quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, if you want to finesse it, you can put a circle hook or something like that, depending on what species are back there. I enjoyed the jig head because it gave it a little weight, kept things more organized. So we're going to attach the balloon to this this loop that we created right below the main line. So all I do is I take a balloon. I try not to make these too big when we're dragging them behind the kayaks. Why? Because we're dragging them. And when you go to reel them in and check your bait, if it's any kind of big, it drags on the water surface and it's hard to reel it in. So I keep it just big enough to keep the pinfish afloat and still be visible. About like that. About like a big cork. Now I take my balloon and I connect it to the loop by just putting it through the loop and then tying a knot again. That's simple. So now I've got a balloon dragging up here, whatever custom size balloon I want, and then about two and a half foot down, I've got a jig head or circle hook, just depending. Jig heads are convenient. I like having the weight on there. You could do like a Carolina rig or something where you've got a suspended weight or a pinch weight. It's just kind of up to you and what you're after. So there you go. That's how I created the drag behind the boat balloon rig. It's really a double dipping situation. If you can catch live bait on the spot with a cast net or with a bait trap like I do, and you can drag some of these behind you while you're crossing some unknown water, some unknown flats, and there's no telling what will whack that, fresh or salt. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to come check us out on Patreon, and we'll see you right here next time on After the Episode. It's party time, baby.